say we're live? Mm-hmm. Good evening. <laughs> um, so the subject matter of the painting. Finally, today, I'm going to start creating it here. Um, and I can work any which way. And if I don't like it, it's very easy to paint out. So it, there's not any... <coughs> Excuse me. Delicate work to worry about. Um, <coughs> and I can work much larger than the twigs on the trees. So this here, this, this black area here, or very dark grey, will become foreground this will be this will be in the middle distance and there might be yet a third far distance before there is the horizon line so that will evolve I haven't made up my mind yet but it will evolve but I wanted a kind of illuminated spire as part of one of the structures so I just painted that squiggle in and I'll put some more effort into it crisping it up a bit as we go But as I say, at this point, it's very easy just to take something out if it's in the wrong place. I mean, this is making silhouettes and shapes in the front. I can also do the same thing but with a um, zinc white. <coughs> zinc white is a transparent white and it, it builds up gradually. You, it looks solid but as it dries, it dries very thin. But it allows you to build a kind of a misty membrane on a painting. Um, okay. So immediately that makes it's got something going on in the foreground, beginning to be a structure of some kind. But I think I think what I'm going to do though is do it in the black. Because it's, it's easier, frankly. Alice asks, what's your favourite font? My favourite font? Mm. Out of the ones I've designed? What about out of all fonts? Yeah, the ones I've designed. <laughs> Which one of those? Um... I did one that looked very, like a very heavy gothic font for the Edgar opera and I liked that enough to go and complete the alphabet. A lot of fonts I've done I've never completed the alphabet but for the Edgar font I did and I used that on Rick Wakeman's box set of Journey and Return to the Centre of the Earth and I'm, I've got a font I called Spirit which is kind of very spooky and I like that. The font I use a lot with Yes is called The Ladder. I, I like them all. They all have a purpose. Do you still do oil on water backgrounds such as octopus, Andy asks? I, well, I haven't for a very long time. Um, hmm, a very long time. I probably think the last ones I did would have been mid 70s maybe earlier <laughs> you're very obedient whenever I tell you to keep painting yeah well I have a very bossy producer <laughs> as you can hear they can't hear I just signal <laughs> <laughs> I see lots of, we've got lots of comments about all the bird noises 
Are they inside the... What's that overhang bit of a roof called? Are they inside or are they outside? I, well, when they're outside, they're still very clear because we've got the, the um, back doors wide open. But like in, like in this corner, there's a load of them going off now. Well, I am hoping they're outside. <laughs> yeah, they get in. What's your favourite species of bird, Alice asked. And Eve, yes. Yeah. My favourite species of bird? Mm. In terms of their personality, um, in the back garden we have a robin that's a surprisingly aggressive and territorial animal. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and it's so tiny. I just think it's got amazing cheek. I like magpies. We have a lot of them. Um, we've had pheasants come into the barn and we have green woodpeckers not only visit the garden but attack the wooden part of the barn or attack it at least they trying to make holes in it mm. in my room I told you didn't I it sounds mm. like someone knocking on the window it's really it's really horrifying and that was a woodpecker I hope so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Um, Nick asks, are you interested in science? Am I interested in science? Yeah. 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 It was... Um, when I came to England, I wanted to do physics. And I'm, I'm only talking O levels now, not degree or anything. And um, my f potential physics teacher wouldn't allow me to do physics because I hadn't done any, you know, I hadn't followed any proper course. Army schools all over the place are pretty hopeless. And there was two of us who um, basically the headmaster allowed us to take the physics exam. But the physics teacher wouldn't let us join his class, so we did the month. We did it on our own, and did okay. It got reasonably good marks. Um, Jim Parker was the other person who did it, and he ended up doing. Um, he became an engineer and scientist in electronics. He was very clever, much cleverer than me. But I did okay in in O levels, and I remember repeating this story too many times but um, when I was started at uh, Canterbury College of Art in our first few weeks we did life drawing and that's all we did while they sorted out where we should be and what should be going on and in the middle of this you class... You keep going out of shot Ed. Well naturally <laughs> okay in the middle of this life drawing class which I and probably most of everybody there found extremely embarrassing. Um, the principal came and asked, is there anyone in this class called Dean? And I owned up and he said, my office. And I went to his office and he was pointing to my exam results. He, and he said, you can't do art with results like this. And I didn't know what on earth he meant, but what he meant, weirdly, was I couldn't do fine art if I got a physics O-level. <laughs> he thought people with maths and physics, which I had, shouldn't be doing art. So he switched me to do industrial design, which was fine, because that was kind of my ambition, to design the future. And I'm repeating this, I know, for probably the umpteenth time. But... For me, I had the best of both worlds because we carried on as industrial design students doing life drawing in every other aspect of the uh, academic fine art training. But the fine art students stopped in, the, in our first year at Canterbury, so 1961, fine art abandoned all academic training, which I think was a, was a tragedy for the well, yes. <laughs> anyway, science, yes, it interests me. 
Alan asks if you ever sketch directly onto the canvas. Yeah, I do. Um, I expect you make with a pencil or something, but I, I do sketch directly on with a paintbrush. Yeah. I think Alan's probably a he. Hmm? I think Alan's probably a he. Oh, right. Yes. I sketch on a canvas with a paintbrush. I'm pretty much doing that now. There's no shape or anything. I'm just sort of building up a mass and so on. Would you ever consider, uh, Andrew asks, would you ever consider, oh. <laughs> I've got so far without fumbling. Oh, well. Andrew Please. asks, would you ever consider building an art center in the US? Uh, yeah, I'd love to, yes. I consider it all the time. Can I ask, um, oh, that's a good question actually. We'll come back to mine. Um, John asks, have you ever produced a self-portrait? No. Oh, okay. Not that I can remember. Hmm. I want to know... Um, I've been lucky, I've had some very nice portraits done by different artists. Yeah, that's true. But, um, including Jeff Jones, who sadly died a few years ago. Um, and Greg Hildebrandt did one for me, which is very nice. I haven't seen the Jeff Jones ones. Oh, I'll show you after. And then we can show it next week. Uh, Mom's Whopper, is that your real name? Um, asked me, do I have paintings of my work around my rooms? Yes, exclusively. I've got one of Dad's up and one of Mum's, but otherwise, it's. But the thing is, with it's a it's a twofold thing, isn't it? Because generally speaking, you do things you like because you wouldn't bother in the first place. But the other thing is, it's just a really useful way of storing stuff that means you don't have to rack everything up somewhere. So in my apartment in Tokyo, everything is mine pretty much. A couple of other people's. Quite a lot of your stuff hanging up here. Mm. In the hall, you've got two pieces. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I want to know um what's the spire what's the building that the spire is atop oh you know spires are inspiring <laughs> i i'm doing it kind of for fun i'm not necessarily thinking of it as a religious building but um it's yeah yeah it's 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 sort of for fun So you don't have anywhere particular in mind that the building is representative of or will be used for in the context of the painting? How about an art centre? Okay, <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> um, Andy asked, are you interested in life on other planets? <laughs> well... You said you wanted better questions this time. <laughs> he didn't, I'm kidding. <laughs> Rick Wakeman was doing an interview. So I apologise, Rick, for repeating your story. And it was sometime after Save the Whale came out. And um, the interviewer said to Rick, come on, Rick. Is John really that interested in the environment? And Rick's response was yes. Um, I don't know anyone who cares more about this planet whilst living entirely on another one. And 
I said to Rick, don't John get upset with you, you repeating that story? And he said, oh no, John repeats it more often than I do. <laughs> I hope that's true. Or we'll both be in trouble. Um, I have asked you this before, I think, on a different one, but a couple of people have asked, um, how do you feel about tattoos of your work? About? Tattoos of your work. I know you've done that one before, but a couple of people asked this time. I remember somebody coming up to me and showing me a tattoo and saying, I'm really sorry, I didn't ask you first. And I said, ask me? You should have asked your mum. That's a good point. Mums make people. <laughs> You're tampering with her property, really. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, how do I feel about it? I... I'm a bit wary of it. I don't mind. I just don't necessarily think it's always a good idea. Not because of a copyright or anything like that. Just because it's, it's kind of permanent. And it's something you need to be terrifyingly sure of. And I don't know. I've been very impressed with some. Um, sorry, I missed who asked this question, um, but they asked, what's on top of the rocks on the right? You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Is it not just more rocks? Is that not just all rock? Is it not all rock? you have to wait and see. Okay. Uh, which, by the way, you won't be able to see when this comes out. I'll have to one day paint it. Um, I was once asked, what happens to the right of that painting? We've had a zoom in request, carry on. And basically these rocks came from a painting that was of this little area here and I explored to the left. And I've done a lot more like that. What's behind this subject or that subject? Okay, you can see from this, this is much looser than even a sketch. It's just making a mass, which I will then push into shape and make it become something. And hopefully in that process, I'll get feedback and get ideas. I will. It happens that way. another person calling me Frida <laughs> I'm just gonna say it one more time guys my name is Freya it's gonna cut a lot more ice <laughs> with me if you call me Freya and you're more likely to have your question asked <laughs> just saying you've got to be warned she's very bossy <laughs> Do you sign your work? Oh. Emily, Emily just said, Frida, can I store your paintings? <laughs> she lit up. <laughs> She's getting me back for what I put on Facebook. Yeah. Sorry, I just asked you a question, a legitimate question from a serious person, All right. not Emily. Okay. <laughs> and what was that? Do you sign your paintings? I do when I remember to, and if ever we sell them, I, sa I sign them. I don't always remember to. It seemed to be, um, I don't know, an intrusion. Originally I thought of it as an intrusion, so I didn't. When I draw, I always do. So my sketchbooks, I sign them all. But paintings, yeah, I do. I always intend to, I don't always remember. Um, Mohsen asks, what's your advice for new painters? For what? New painters. New painters? Mm, I guess people getting into painting. 
Well, if somebody was going to go to art school and ask would I, what advice I would have, I would say learn as many skills as you can, but really, really focus on drawing. But what if they're not going to art school? What if it's just anybody who's decided that they're, they want to start painting? Well, it's the same as if you wanted to learn to play guitar or anything. You really, really have to put in the time. That's what it's all about. You have to put in the time. Get yourself a good teacher if you can, but whether you do or you don't, you have to put in the time. And a lot of time, sadly, it takes a lot of time. Uh, and it should be worth it. And I would say as well, like, I... Um I've been doing a few different jobs, but not much kind of just sketching for fun. And I did a bit today. And I think what you've got to allow yourself to do is not be great necessarily at the beginning. And I could find myself editing what I was doing and judging it before I'd even had a chance to start enjoying it. Yeah, so I, I think I agree with that. you've got to just let yourself muck about and not stop because your inner voice is saying it's not good enough. Just keep pressing through that and it will come out on the other side, usually. Yeah, that inner voice is not your ally. In fact, anything that stops you thinking is a good thing. So listening to stories, it does prevent that kind of analytical and self-questioning voice so there's no place for that just get on with it what do you think of the yes talk lp cover um who was that again who asked talk Mm. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> let me put it this way. If the roles had been reversed, I wouldn't have tried to do a better, a better, uh, better logo. I thought um, as a standalone piece, yeah, nice. But it was, it was a challenge challenge for him to do it uh, he got a lot of flack for it too not from me but <laughs> yeah uh, he could have done something different but interesting yeah I'm struggling with this one Someone just made a really good comment, which is that the inner voice is the editor, only listen to it when you're done. I think that's absolutely true, isn't it? It's counterproductive to the creative process. So when you're done for the day, it doesn't have to be when the painting's done, but don't try and engage at the same time as painting. What People want to see your work in area. Oh. So we got lots of cups. Dad mixes the acrylic with water to make it a sort of liquid. Yeah, to... this is not my usual working place, but my usual working place is an even bigger mess. Does John Anderson's visions help your creativity? Stephen asks. His what? John Anderson's visions, I guess. Do you mean like his visions for the album covers? No, not really. I mean, no. You come up with the two things separately, the music and the art. Ask that question again in a different way because I'm not quite sure where, where it was going if I ask it in a different way I'll be guessing what they mean okay ask it again then <laughs> okay um does John Anderson's ideas for the album influence what you do with the cover correct me if I'm wrong um 
simple answer to that is no. There's only one time we ever discussed a cover and in a collaborative way, and that was Tales from Topographic Oceans. And the way that came about was um, we were flying, in 1973, we were flying to Tokyo, and we were flying via Anchorage in Alaska. And somebody had put together a cake for the band, and the cake got shared out with everybody on board. And I have no idea what was in the cake, but it did have, from London to Alaska, everyone was pretty stunned and not speaking at all. But from Alaska to Tokyo, I couldn't stop talking. And I just finished working with John Michel, who wrote a book called View Over Atlant Atlantis, which was about landscape and ley lines and dragon lines and stuff like that. And I was telling John all about it at the same time we were flying over the most incredible landscapes of North Russia, Siberia. So that was my experience of Tales from Topographic Oceans, which was sadly just lecturing John for hours. <laughs> I couldn't stop talking, but he was very into it too. So we talked on that album. Oh no, that wasn't the only time. Another time we talked at length was Anderson Bruford Waitman Howe and he had some uh, experiences in the desert with the Anastasi which gave me the, um, some ideas to work with. So what are you working on now? Are you sort of ca carving out some shapes? In I'm kind of playing and seeing what comes because as I say, this is, this is endlessly malleable. I can ch change my mind, I can paint it all out and do something new. And I'm, and I'm just playing. It's, but it, it's to a purpose. It will, in the end, guide me into what I want to, you know, the kind of thing I want to be there. I want it something not ambiguous. Well, I do want it ambiguous. I don't want it to look just random, but I don't need it to be too specific. And it has to look interesting. It has to be somewhere where the traveler, the viewer wants to go and explore what is going on there. So I want to make an exciting and mysterious place all in one. And I could have worked it all out in advance. I did dozens and dozens of drawings but I'm happy for the moment to play. I won't revert to the drawings unless this doesn't work. And my guess is this will work. I'll play. Ah, that'll look like something. That could be something else. And gradually it will come together. So it's important to play. I've got enough fixed real estate in this painting that's, well, it doesn't tell you a lot, but it tells you about shapes in space so here I can make it much more mysterious. Do you ever paint outdoors? Nick has asked. I've painted and sketched out of doors but mostly I sketch out of doors. I rarely paint out of doors. Simple answer. Keep going. Are all the books in the studio reference or inspiration material? Yeah, pretty much. All the books that I read, like books on science or history, are elsewhere. Most of these are visual. I'm getting fierce instructions. Get on with the painting.
Have you designed any of the furniture in your home? Sorry, I missed the name. No. We used to have the urchin chair, didn't we? The sea urchin chair. The first prototype I ever made of the sea urchin chair was acquired for the Victoria and Albert Museum. Um, a few went into production. And of that few, I had one that was hanging around the studio. And I had a request for it to be in the permanent collection of the museum in Vienna, the furniture ex uh, museum in Vienna. So that one went. So at the moment, there isn't one, but I have had some approaches from people about putting them into proper manufacture. So frankly, that could happen. It looks more than possible. And that would be good, good fun. Didn't, uh, when we had it in the house, didn't we realise there was something living in it <laughs> at one point? Wow. And, and we moved it to look because we could hear something. <laughs> and when we moved it, a load of chewed up foam fell out the bottom. Yeah. Is that the one that you gave to the museum? <laughs> Had a history. Get in the shot. <laughs> Had a history. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Lots of, we're getting lots of comments on the birdies making lots of noises. They're really going for it right now. Um, they are, aren't they? Alan asks, is this your painting vest? My painting vest? Your painting vest. No. When I was asked about that first time, it was a different one. It was a black one. Mm. I suppose... To widen the question out, do you change clothing for when you're painting? Um, do you have like workwear and It's pretty other? much what I wear all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's what I wear all the time. Occasionally, very rarely, I do get dressed up. A very long time ago, I, actually I still have it, but a very long time ago, I had a rather beautiful uh, Miyasaki suit in dark green linen and um, when the Royal College of Art celebrated its 150th anniversary I was invited oh wait when you say Miyasaki do you mean Issy Miyake yes I do and um, I was invited with Jonathan Ives at Apple to go to dinner at the Royal College with Prince Charles. And I remember the person who's directing this video saw me in this suit and said, what on earth are you doing? And I said, I'm going to dinner with Prince Charles. And she said, oh no, does that mean I don't get a story tonight? <laughs> well, as it happened, we never had dinner with Prince Charles. I had dinner with Jonathan Ives we both were bemused about whatever happened to dinner plans. Uh, someone asked, is a vest your only look? Is what? Is a vest your only look? No, I did last <laughs> session with a sweater. Yeah, yeah, you did. I had a dark blue sweater. That's a very cheeky person. I'm going to paint this out. <laughs> Jerry asks, are you going to Dragon Con again? Um, if I'm invited, I'm, yeah, it was fun, yeah. I'm going to let you figure out what you're doing while I answer one of the questions, which was why you're not using a palette. Um, I showed you earlier, so Dad, get out of the way. <laughs> Dad's paints are all in cups because it's acrylic mixed with water um, and that's why it wouldn't work in a palette. So Dad's going straight from the cups. Yeah, I like, I like to be able to go back to a colour, so, but what can I say? I said before we, the day's over, 
not this day, but this project, I'll do a sketch in oils. So we can all learn from that experience. You're wearing your braces very coquettishly over your shoulder. <laughs> you might want to <laughs> address that right on the outside. Oh. And have to punish for it. Oh, someone says ice cube trays work well for palettes. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, have you thought about doing movable 4D art? Was one of the questions. Mo movable 4D art. Does it, what's that? Animation. I mean, I would interpret that more like what Team Lab do, sort of experiential. Well, but maybe they case, mean yeah, animation. Yeah, we have thought about it, worked out a lot of ideas for it, and yeah, an interesting thing. Yes, definitely would be interested in pursuing that. <laughs> Bob says, do we hear cows in the background? Yes, you do. There's cows, there's birds. What else have we got? Well, Sheep. too early in the evening for foxes, Mama. but we have a lot of wildlife here. Yeah. As well, the cows aren't actually wildlife, but yeah. The foxes are the weirdest. The foxes are the weirdest. They sound like screaming people, don't they? They definitely sound weird. Oh, lots of people like Team Lab. Me too. Like what? Team Lab. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Trey has asked me what inspired you to paint. Um, Dad always says the same thing to this one as well. Um, it's just one of those things everybody does, isn't it? And then some people, for whatever reason grow out of it or stop doing it but um, I work with kids sometimes and just they wouldn't think of not doing it it's what they do between things they have to do <laughs> that they don't want to it's sort of how they fill their time um, so I guess obviously because of mum and dad I wasn't encouraged out of it um, and I guess because of mum and dad I was quite good at it, relatively speaking, for my age, and yeah, you kind of tend to stick at things you know you do better than other things, relatively speaking. It's a weird thing, I heard someone say the other day, I wish I could remember the exact quote, but someone was saying, if you have a calling, it's not the same as like enjoying or being interested in something it's not that kind of same sort of fun oh I feel like doing this it's that you can't not it's sort of you feel unwell and unlike yourself if you're not doing it but at the same time you don't really get that oh I really fancy doing this kind of thing I don't know what do you think um I do enjoy doing it I find it very peaceful um, and I've got hundreds of ideas I'd like to paint and I know I won't have time to do a tiny fraction of them but having said that there are things you know building things interest me more than painting so it's going to be it might be something I end up doing less of and still being very happy about that does that start looking like something do you think mm. okay I'll knock it into shape Um, if you were to have a museum in America, would you design the building in your architecture style? 
I wouldn't do it otherwise. Yeah, that would be the only way that would make sense to me. I would want to combine the total environment with the space where you could see the paintings. Someone's asked, how do you feel about self-taught artists? Frankly, it's the only way, because art schools have kind of given up on it. I, I promise not to be too negative. <laughs> Um, Patrick Woodruff, I was asked a lot about Patrick last time, and he, he was self-taught, and um, there are advantages, well, n nothing can beat a good teacher. If you're lucky enough to get a good teacher, you're, you're very lucky, but um, yeah. Being around people who do it, even if they're, they're not more advanced than you, is always useful. It's always useful to be in an environment where it's happening. Um, we've had it asked a couple of times why you paint the side. I know you said. But why, why I paint? The side of the canvas. Well, yeah, it means I can hang it on the wall without it looking... Rough. Wrong, yeah. These don't really need framing, but they can be framed. They look good framed, but the surface is pretty robust. Got a close up request. I'm trying to do this smoothly. We'll do it again before we finish. We, uh, someone asked if we've got any more shop samples. We haven't, but we should get on with... Any more? Shop samples. Yes, we need to talk about that, and mm. we need to talk about the prints, and... I've been asked a lot, are we going to do another exhibition this year? Um, before the lockdown, I've been invited to do at least one major exhibition in America, which, as far as I know, it's early next year, is still happening, although everything's a little bit up in the air. And Trading Boundaries are planning to do the November show, same as last year, same as the year before. And unless something prevents it, I would say yes. At this point, it looks like we're going to do the exhibition at Trading Boundaries this year. And one in America late spring next year. I think we should talk about products as well and maybe this weekend get some new stuff. Yeah. Okay, uh, we can do that Monday? Yeah. Good. Because yeah. with any luck, I might get this to the point where I can say, okay, I'll get it photographed and we'll get an album made out of it. That would be exciting if we could yeah. get everything in one nice set of series of videos. So we've got a number of projects which we're doing, which we ought to talk about, the new book we need to get on with. And we are gonna figure out how to do a talk on architecture. The challenge is how to show the pictures. They're on a, a keynote slideshow at the moment, and I'm not sure, but I, I, I'm being, getting advice how to do the talk and do the slideshow. So we'll, we'll come back to that on Monday and go through it again. Um, someone's asked, where's the tra it's Trading Boundaries, um, and it's in Fletching in Sussex. Mid, mid Sussex. If you go to, is it just tradingboundaries.com? Yeah. Tradingboundaries.com. Um, it's wrapping up time. It is. Any more questions? Uh, what will the next book be called? Jerry asks. There's, no, there's always tons of questions. I can never, I can never get to all of them. Well, at the moment, we don't have a title. 
for the fourth book. At the moment, it's just called the fourth book. And Dragon's Dream is called the third book, or Views 3. So it, it's got a placeholder, but we, hasn't, we haven't got a good name for it yet. Hmm. It should be bigger than the first three, because we've got a lot more work in the 12 years since the, first, the last one came out. Um, I want to say, as always, particularly at the end for some reason, loads of great questions come through and I want to ask all of them. I miss half of them noting the ones that I see down. So if I missed your question, I'm really sorry. Come back on Monday or Wednesday or Friday, 7pm, same time, every time, English time, 7pm. Um, and again, as always, it's just been really nice reading your comments and questions. Oh yes, and we were going to say we are doing this Japanese session, Frere and I. We're going to oh, yes, design and make a creature. And we're going to have to put the Japanese Facebook address on my website. Oh no, on my website. Facebook site. I'll show you quick. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, I'm absolutely No, no, put it up. Put it up. Properly. I'll put it up as well. This is what it is. It's called Courtyard Hero. But if you write Courtyard um, Hero, you should find it. You don't need to put the Japanese katakana. You can just write Courtyard Hero. Um, and then if you scroll down, there's lots of interesting things like my adult teaching classes <laughs> advertised here. Sign up, if you like. <laughs> uh, <sorry to> add. <laughs> Are we doing that on the 30th? It's on the 30th. Um, we'll add the time. We're still kind of figuring out the time because we really want something that works for England. It has to work for England, obviously, and Japan because that's their market. But we really want it to work for America, East and West Coast too. We'll put it up on both Freya and my website mm. as well. So... And yeah. we're trying to do an amalgam of Freya's very weird creatures. Should we show them quickly, the drawing? Do the you have them? I've got... Uh, we'll do it next time, we'll do it next time. Yeah, we'll show you them on Monday. So there we go, we can sort of chain link our projects in each video. Yeah. Freya does, teaches kids how to make things, so it might, if there's any children watching, maybe we can show them how to make them as well. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. It's been a very interesting experience painting like this. We'll see you Monday. Thank you. Thank you.